Singapore Home Brew on Money FM 89.3. The National Heritage Board is marking its 81st anniversary with the return of the Battle for Singapore Initiative, a series of guided talks, tours, exhibitions, and the Mint Museum of Toys has carried a special guided tour program for the Battle of Singapore as well, uh, having a vintage toy collection from the 1940s with a special feature on General MacArthur, uh, available the 10th of February to the 5th of March. Joining us now in the studio to talk about both of these events is Gerald Wee, the Director of International and Museum Relations for the National Heritage Board here in Singapore, and Chang Yang Fa, the CEO of the Mint Museum of Toys. Gentlemen, so great to have you both with us here on Money FM. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks very much. Thank yeah. You. Good morning, At, everyone. Well, thank you so much. And uh, why don't we go ahead and, and start with you, Gerald. Tell us a bit about What's happening with the NHB, this 81st anniversary, uh, and uh, so, so many different things going on? Yeah, thank you. Um, the Battle for Singapore program is an annual program we do. Uh, this year is the 81st anniversary of the Hall of Singapore. Um, what we seek to do in these programs is to uncover hidden stories of some of the World War II sites in, in Singapore. Uh, we try to do this through a series of tours, talks, uh, film screenings as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we find it very useful because uh, not only does it uh, serve as a sort of entertainment and, not, and educa education for the public, but uh, we ourselves, in doing the research, actually find out more about these hidden gems and mm -hmm. sites all around us. Um, the whole intent of this program, ultimately, is to teach people more mm -hmm. about the history of Singapore and also to... Uh, help them to be inspired by some of these stories of yeah. resilience by our war pioneers. Yeah. Gerald, you know what impresses me? Two things, effectively. The first thing is, every year, you guys keep coming up with a whole series of events. Mm. And this year, you're doing everything around the 81st anniversary of the Battle of Singapore. Yeah. So many events. Just go to the NHB website. They're all highlighted there. The second thing is the public demand interest seems to be higher than mm. ever before in Singapore's mm. heritage sites, mm. Singapore's history. You know, you're there at the front line at NHB. Why do you think that is? Why is there such interest now in our history and heritage? Well, I think uh, we are increasingly finding um, that people, uh, not only do they feel uh, or resonate, that not only does heritage resonate more with them, but as they go into it, and as we do more of these tours, we do find interesting and new nuggets of information that continue to uh, spark the interest of the public. Yeah. Um, and it's something that we do deliberately because every year, for example, it's a challenge on our site actually mm. to find new and interesting sites that have not been covered before. I mean, it's an annual program, so we do want to ensure that we keep the uh, content fresh. Um, this year, for example, aside from the Mid Museum of Toys, we also have special feature tours um, for new sites like Fort Connaught, which have not been done before. Yeah. Uh, and I, we think we get that uh, public interest going. We're talking with Gerald Weed, the Director of International and Museum Relations at the National Heritage Board, and Chang Yang Fa, the CEO of the Mint Museum of Toys. And Yang Fa, let's bring you on. And, and your museum just across the street from Raffles Hotel down in, uh, in town is, is amazing. It's your own personal collection of toys that you've amassed. Uh, part of your collection over the years, but now you have a special focus on Second World War vintage toys. Tell us about what that looks like. What do you have in this uh, special exhibit that's happening? Well, our collection, uh, in fact, includes a lot of historical uh, items as well, They're related mainly to uh, children. Uh, in this case, our uh, collection features toys from, uh, you know, from before the war, Second World War till after, uh, including the occupied Japan. When the Japanese were occupied from 1945 to 52, there was a exclusive period where all the Japanese toys have to have the label occupied Japan. Oh, is that right? Mm. Yes, wow. yes, all the toys. <laughs> huh. And uh, so that makes it unique because after which they could revert back to me in Japan again. So to find right. such a collection or to be uh, told about this uh, period is interesting. Hmm. And can I ask you, yes. uh, Young Fa, because 
all of the other toys that I'm aware of in the museum are yours. Is this also, is this collection also yours? Did you buy this collection? Absolutely. Wow. I mean, this, this, this collection that you see is only a tip of the iceberg, actually. I've been collecting for more than 35 years. And we are Money FM, so I am going to have to ask the <laughs> crass question because every Singaporean <laughs> listener is thinking it. Is there a ballpark figure for what this kind of collection would cost? Well, it's hard or, to, to... Or the value of it? Or the yeah, value, it's, yeah. it's, You know, value is very subjective, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it depends. I mean, recently, i give you an example. I have a Popeye tank, uh, you know, that uh, there are a few in the world. We have a couple of them, actually, that, in the collection, I'm glad to say. And it was auctioned off for 105,000 US. Wow. Huh? So it, wow. because this guy wanted it so badly. Mm -hmm. So wow. value is very subjective, but I see the value in my toys not so much in the monetary part of it, more in the historical value and the intrinsic value of the toys. Oh, well, I appreciate that you're saying that, but come on, you know, in Singapore. <laughs> how much? How much? La, huh? so how, many, how many actual toys in your entire collection? How many pieces do you have? Do you know I, that number? I would like to say more than 50,000. Yeah. But I think it's probably closer to 100,000. Yeah. And not all of them are at the Mint Museum no, on display, no, right? By no means. By what no percentage means. would you say is on display at any given time? Less than 10%. Less than, less than 10%. than 10%? Absolutely. Wow. I thought it was 40. No, no, no. Less than 10%. And you, I, 10%. I know I'm not expecting you to tell us the address, but you yeah. keep the rest in, in, in a warehouse or something. Is that warehouses. In the storage facility. Warehouses. warehouses. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That makes sense. So there's, uh, you know, we, we can only imagine what that total number might look like in terms of value again depending on the individual toys and all that let's bring back specifically though to the world war ii toys yes. that you have in uh, the battle of singapore yes and, and talk to us a little bit some of the highlights of some of those toys what 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 would people see if they went down to the mint museum and looked at that yeah i think one of them of course is the uh, general douglas MacArthur figure mm. uh, that's that's also a very interesting uh, is it like an action toy. figure what does it look like no, it's actually just a, a composition figure. I think it's mere composition. You know, made made during that period when they were celebrating the the the, the you know the, after the war. Mm -hmm. So the toy company decided to capitalize on it, of course, and they made a, a replica of General MacArthur. How big is it? Uh, it's about in terms of inches, probably about, about around a foot. Oh, okay, wow. so about twelve inches. So, yeah, yeah okay. about twelve inches. Yeah, about yeah. that. I didn't know they did this. So they commemorated. You know, prestigious military figures oh, after yes, World yes, War Two. Yes, yes. yes. Are, there, fact, are there others that we're we have, aware of? Well, we have a, a piece of uh, Chiang Kai-shek as well. Wow! <laughs> a full wow. military regalia. Which, Absolutely, which, which might be a little more, more interesting for Singapore audiences, yes. right? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, we we do have a lot of these kind of things hidden away. Not say hidden away, but kept away until such times when it's appropriate to display them. And uh, of course, we have a lot of the toys that were made in Japan before the Second World War, when they were actually preparing to go to war, they were actually preparing their public uh, for the for the, the their sort of uh, campaign. Yeah. And you find a lot of these toys were war toys. Mm -hmm. Not not toys that you will expect that children will be playing playing with. You see. Interesting. You know, they are imagine machine gun toys, you know, uh -huh. toys, children playing with uh, machine gun and uh, machine gunners, you know, things in uniform, tanks, you know, camouflaged. So are they, are they kind of for propaganda purposes? Yeah, do you think? absolutely, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think this has been going on even in Germany as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not only Japan, you know, but of course Singapore is more related to that. Period. Yeah. But I have also in the collection uh, German toys, pre-war German toys, which also shows likewise. I mean, the Hitler. For example, the, the 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 car that Hitler used to sit in, mm. we have that as well. You know, wow. Mm. So it's uh, fascinating to see that even through the toys, they're trying to nurture that imperialistic mindset, that nationalistic mindset. Quite extraordinary. And I'm sure some of this is covered in the tours. You're running the tours yes. from February, 10th of February to the 5th of March. Just to give us a little oversight of what that tour is going to be like. I think what we have there is that we have not only on display, we have also now introduce augmented reality as well mm. and yeah so you will see through our qr codes and so on you know certain uh, more information than just a mere figure uh, place there so the experience is going to be enhanced by all this new uh, technology that we have introduced some of uh, them are supported by the government like nhb of course yeah. we like to acknowledge that mm. 
and uh, we actually appreciate that and uh, would like to take the opportunity to say thank you mm. <laughs> and uh, well, Gerald I, we is right next to you yeah, 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 much yeah, more yeah. of a direct I, 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 I was going to say I'd like to thank the whole, on behalf of the whole nation you donating an entire toy collection <laughs> no, for us to see yeah, yeah. 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 Ger Gerald uh, we from the NHB let's bring it back to you when you when you hear young Fa talk about the toys and especially this particular period World War II period in Singapore's history what comes to mind about you you mentioned trying to bring in different audiences and bringing history alive in different ways and every yeah. year coming up with a lot of different programs. This would certainly be one way to attract a different audience yes. to help them understand yes, World War II. exactly, exactly. Uh, it's precisely these kinds of nuance or different nuances, you know, that we are trying to bring out. Uh, I mean, the history books are quite clear on a lot of what happened in the past, but what is relatively unknown are these hidden aspects of the war which are often glossed over, overlooked. Mm. Uh, we hear often also, and we also want to correct some myths, you know, there's always the myths that the guns were pointed the wrong way and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if, there's, if there's a way we can uh, come out, uh, do additional research through these tours and also to let the public see uh, there's these, these, these different aspects of the war. Then it became a much more holistic picture yeah. of what uh, life was like then, uh, the challenges faced, and um, I think the lessons that we, that can be drawn from there are still relevant today. Could not agree more. Yeah. As a proud history graduate myself, I've always believed that history should and can be a tactile, physical experience. If you can make it one, if you can make it immersive, the Fort Connaught tour, which I'll talk about later, is a fabulous example of that. What else have you got in that vein? You know, tours, exhibitions for Singaporeans during this Battle for Singapore exhibition period. Well, we also have uh, film screenings by the National Archives, hmm. um, which basically presents some of the uh, World War II related films. We have some uh, unusual twin tours. Um, for example, the Lee Kong Chen Natural History Museum is working with Reflections at Bukit Chandu to do a twin tour hmm. uh, that looks at the... Uh, it's 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 located at Reflections of Bukit Chandu, but there's a nature tour that's twinned with it. Um, and then the tour will then go into a tour of Reflections of Bukit Chandu, which is our interpretive center that looks at the experiences of the Malay Regiment. Uh, oh, it's, a, it's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful exhibit that was re restored uh, about, what, uh, six, eight years ago? Now? Yeah, renovated. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Yeah. 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 We also have uh, a, a sharing session by collectors like Elvin Lim from Elvin's Bunker. Uh, he's a very avid collector of World War One and World War Two memor memorabilia. Hmm. Um, he's going to share about his collection as well as his experiences and challenges as a collector. Hmm. Yeah, so we try to cover these different aspects, and there are also talks that the public can go to. Yeah, yeah. and of course people can go to the basement of the National Museum, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah there's that's a huge yeah. World War Two right. area exactly down yeah. there, and you're walking through all the the sounds, the sirens, and yeah. all that. That's very impactful. Any, any, anywhere at this time, the Battle Box, Fort Soloso, these are all great places to go to, the heritage trails that they've got around Sentosa and other places. This is a very good time to do it. A philosophical question, why? Why is this stuff so important, do you think? Um, well, there are several levels to this. Uh, I do think there's always a value to learning about the history of your location, your the people that came before you. Mm. Um, but also, and also to draw some lessons and inspiration, of course. Um, but there's also uh, a relevance today. Uh, as you're looking, looking at the world around you today, you can mm -hmm. see how circumstances can change very quickly. Um, and it's, uh, I guess, the lesson is that we shouldn't take things for granted. Um, things yeah. can change for uh, very quickly, and you have to uh, always put a priority to maintaining your defense, being prepared and having the spirit of resilience uh, similar to what we had in the past uh, with our forefathers. Of course, we just had Total Defense uh, Day. Yes. Uh, all the sirens, uh, I was sitting at home and all the sirens were off. Like, yep, yes. Total Defense Day. And it was great because I turned on the TV. I mean, I knew it was Total Defense Day, but they give you all of the, the warnings, what each of the warnings means, what the sirens mean, you know, what, what level of, uh, of activity should be observed. And for a place like Singapore, that's absolutely urgent. You know, mm. if there were ever any threat to Singapore, mm. we need to know immediately, and we need to know how to respond immediately. Yeah, there can't be any delay. Mm. Uh, so, um, and just on that yeah. lessons of history, yeah. you make such a great point there, Gerald. Because as I mentioned to Glenn previously, they sell these newspapers, these recreated newspapers at the Battle Box, and there's one from the Times, the Times of London, 
it was this expat paper they sent out mm. periodically mm. you know once every two weeks and it's there's a special on singapore and it's only a year maybe a year before the japanese invasion completely oblivious no idea mm. the british empire mm. would have had no it's all about what's happening at raffles and this <laughs> and that they would have had no idea so exactly. you're absolutely correct gerald we we ignore the lessons of history at our peril yes exactly i, I give you an example one lesson uh, that was quite apparent is when we went into the history of uh, that area and when we look at the forts in Sentosa, uh the, the british were reinforcing singapore right until the day of the surrender you know, there were troops that came in and these were these were actual battle trained troops, you know, but they weren't able to be deployed because the advance of the Japanese was so quickly, so quick, mm. that by the time they came, before they could even set up the defenses, it fell, the, 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 the colony fell. Yeah. So the, the need for planning, the need to be prepared, I think that has to be underscored. Yeah. Uh, back to uh, Chen Yang Fa, the CEO of Mint Museum of Toys. Uh, the toys that you have in this World War II collection are any of them made in Singapore, or were they? You mentioned the ones that were made in Japan during the occupation. Um, what kinds of toys were actually made in Singapore during those years, or were there? I think Singapore was in a different state at that time, uh, mm. being part of Britain, and uh, I think the livelihood was more important than toys. I would say yeah. at that time. So making toys locally uh, are all indigenous made. I Means you know children improvise their own, make their own toys. Mm -hmm. So some of them we do have. Mm. Yeah, but they're all not manufactured toys like what you imagine, mm. mass produced. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and what uh, what are some of those types of homemade toys, if you will? That they uh, things like catapults and things like oh. that, you know, where they cut from trees. Oh. We have those, uh, in fact, uh, in our collection. Mm. And uh, even things like uh, uh, you know uh, what you call chap chap take they call it you know, yeah of course take, mm. Eh? Mm. Uh, things like that we have them in in, in our so-called traditional toys yeah Young Fung, which is quite is, interesting yeah. right I very mean, interesting yeah. glenn makes a very interesting point there when did toy buying toy gathering became a thing in singapore because obviously period of colony then japanese occupation yeah. there's no yeah. money for toys or things like no, that no, but no. you've charted almost the history of toys in your museum yeah. When did toy ownership become a real thing in Singapore? You mean among collectors or just generally, among, generally among the population? Yeah, among the population. Uh, I think I'm probably the, the earliest and probably the oldest toy collector in, the, in that sense. Mm. <laughs> so uh, that maybe like the nineteen sixties, the nineteen sixties or seventies. Is that when people finally had money to I, spend on? I think you're right. Those I think it's around probably more towards the eighties. Really, the eighties? Yeah, it's 80s, like this. Seventies to eighties, yeah. Wow. I think the media plays a big part of it, of course, hmm. you know, and uh, and in fact, today, uh, a lot of collectors, they, what they're collecting are actually not toys. They call them collectibles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. You know, and then they're made to be collected, not not made to be played. You so see. so right. based upon what you're hearing, is it really that Star Wars on period when yes. toy merchandise becomes a really big thing? Because I know you have some fantastic Star Wars originals. And when I spoke to you about it before, I wouldn't say you were sniffy about it, but you was not. <laughs> there were other toys in the museum that impressed you more. Yes, Would that yes. be fair to say? Yes, I think so, because I think the Star Wars toys was a period of where, you know, uh, George Lucas actually brought toys to the, the main public mm. by producing cheap toys. Toys for the, the masses. For the masses, yeah. which actually the, sort of takes away the, the, the so-called beauty of, toys itself you know vintage toys mm. because it becomes accessible to everybody and mm. every everybody can own a toy and they're mass produced in thousands so that makes it very common and not valuable i i miss i miss and i mean i underestimated it today in fact star wars collection are worth millions exactly yeah, nicholas exactly. cage uh, in fact auctioned off his uh, collection <laughs> exactly. would you believe it it's all right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It went for for a lot of money was there a period when toys were manufactured in singapore Yes. Yeah. When and what what was being made here and when was that? I think there used to be a, a, a blue box factory just across the road here. Oh, oh really? Right. Where the yellow pages? Yes. Uh, yes. Used to be here. Opposite okay. Brado okay. MRT. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. This was blue, a blue box. box. What is that? Is the name of the the, the, the toy manufacturer. Mm -hmm. It was actually I think a Hong Kong company. They set up a factory here, mm -hmm. and I think Corgi, the British uh, English uh, toy company. Uh, also made made some toys here as well. So I have those in the collection. Really? Yeah. I, I in fact I specifically 
uh, sort of sort out toys that are made in Singapore specifically, you know. And it's very hard to find them mm -hmm. because a lot of people tend to collect toys from uh, Japan, you know. They're more so-called valuable, you know, mm -hmm. collectible. So for Singapore, it's something like very obscure. And who, where is Singapore? A lot of them may not even know at that time. You know? So a lot of these toys were all thrown away. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to find these toys. But there are some made here. They are mainly cheap plastic toys mm -hmm. and when i say cheap they are they are they are also fragile mm. so that means they are actually difficult to find mm. still mm. another potential tour there gerald i think <laughs> <laughs> singapore made toys i would, I would certainly yeah. go along, I would uh, certainly go along. Uh, gerald uh, jane Iyer from jane's singapore tours is commenting on facebook live said great to see the nhb tours to commemorate the 81st anniversary of the fall of Singapore, but it's almost impossible to get tickets. <laughs> and I have to echo Jay's point. She's not the first to say yeah, that. I mean, yeah. popularity is a good thing, yeah. but they were snapped up quick. Yes. What, what is your What is your feeling on that? I mean, uh, you, you know, surely you have seen the popularity of this. Yes. Any thoughts to expand uh, and to try to address that? Yeah. So every year, in fact, uh, we have been expanding the program almost every year. Mm. Uh, this year, for example, we have 30 type, unique types of programs, 19 of which are new, um, which mm. we've not done before. Um, the, the challenge for us often is the site limitations. Um, if, um, for example, some of the sites can only take tour sizes of a certain capacity. Mm. Um, we also have challenges in terms of access. Uh, one of, the, re one of the, uh, the, the great aspects of the, the, the program is that it gives the public chance to go into places that they cannot normally go to, like, for example, special access pl places that you need special permission for. Yeah. But that permission cannot be granted uh, in total, all, I mean, uh, all the time. Such as Fort Connaught. Yeah, su such as Fort Connaught. So yeah. we do have to restrict, and there's only a certain number of, I mean, there's 24 hours a day only, you know, you, there's yeah. only a certain number of tours you can do during that period where we have those approved. Um, we do want to talk to our partners to see whether some of these tours can be done and made permanent. But of course, those are t discussions that are always mm. ongoing. Yeah. It's funny, earlier this week, Neil, Neil had a chance to go to the media yeah. opening, uh, the media tour of Fort Connaught uh, over in Sentosa. We're going to talk about that in a little while. But earlier this week, I reached out to the to, to PR folks and I said, hey, I'd really like to go and see Fort Connaught this week sometime if I can before we have you on this weekend, you know, so we can have a chat. And and the reply came back almost immediately, cannot. <laughs> Everything's booked up. We got no space for you. I'm like, what? wait a minute, we're doing a story on it. <laughs> but just to give you an idea, it's packed, it's yeah. busy, and like you say, limited time that people can actually yeah. physically are allowed yeah. to go in there. Yeah. So. Yeah. And we, are, we do understand our partners have their constraints too. Um, but where what we have found through this progress is that people are actually willing to go be above and beyond sometimes to do more of these tours. Mm. Uh, but there will always be a limit. And that's all, there will always be a, a Can challenge you, there. Are, is there. Are there videos made of any of these things? Like, let's say the Fort Connaught tour. You know, will there be a, an online experience that people can maybe at some point take part in it? Oh, yeah. We are exploring that. Uh, that and there are some, some technical challenges to that, of course. But having said that, it is something that we hope to do in future, uh, yeah. to put some of these, uh, make these tours virtualized, yeah. uh, put them online after the tour so that the public can still well, go. For the seniors, yeah. for the young yeah. kids, yeah. for the yeah. whoever. Yeah. Yeah. Because because definitely still to your point, yeah. it, it's not only demand, there are safety aspects. Yeah. As someone who has done yes. that tour, yeah. there are s slopes and slips yes. involved. Sure. It, yes. It's quite precarious. Yes. So certain folks couldn't do it, mm. and the numbers really do have yeah. to be controlled. Managed. Yeah. It's not Disneyland. It can't, yeah, be, exactly. a, it can't be a free yeah. fall. Yeah. Yeah. Last question for you. Yeah. What's next? Well, uh, we over the years, as we look at the Battle for Singapore programs, uh, next year there will be another one. We haven't quite decided how, what angle to use for that, um, but we try to look at it from both the air, land, and sea aspects. So this year, we'll, for example, it's primarily the sea aspect, focusing on Fort Corner. Last year, it was the air aspect mm. when we looked, when we did uh, uh, an installation at uh, 179 Piccadilly in Salita. That used to be the former um, uh, RAF uh, base right. at mm -hmm. Salita, uh, which was then taken over by the SAF or then after. But uh, these different aspects are something we are trying to look at, and it depends also on the partners that we are able to get on board. Um, but we always look for these interesting new sites. So keep yeah. tuned to this. Yeah. And, and so, the final point, mm, sorry, the feedback yeah. is positive. Whatever number of tours you've got planned, <laughs> double them. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it true, I read somewhere that, that um, Salita was the, the first international airport in Asia in the 1920s when the, when the RAF... Uh, first started it 
Is that have you heard that? Um, I believe it might have been, but I'm not yeah. sure. I know Kalang yeah. Airport. Yeah, was yeah but one of the before, most exactly. Yeah, whether it, whether it was the first, I'm not sure. In the, in the 20s, airport. I heard it, I heard it was the first mm-hmm. somewhere. Right, but I'd like to. Confirm There's that. something about Kalang Airport that's ringing bells about being one of the first commercial airports, mm. certainly for the British Empire. Right. I would have to check that. Interesting. Yeah. Jane Eyre is listening. I'm uh, sure she knows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yang Fang, any any final comments from you about toys and marking this anniversary and and just going forward? Well, we have a lot of programs lined up as well, <laughs> if I, yeah, 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 for the year. So I think I just want to uh, you know uh, urge the public to keep a lookout for all these programs. Uh, there'll be more interesting uh, plans we have ahead, mm. and uh, we're working very closely with NHB, of course, yeah. to coordinate all these uh, programs. Mm. And you and, told uh, me off air briefly that you've recently renovated yes, the, the museum. Correct, correct. So what have what have you changed? We have actually uh, introduced a lot of new uh, technological aids so that they make the experience more, uh, I would say, uh, proactive and more and more, I would say, uh, friendly, IT friendly. Nice. Yeah. And also people can actually have a better experience. And uh, I, I hope at the end of the day, as I always tell all my visitors, you, when you leave the place, you have a free souvenir, which is the mint experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Yeah. There you go. Chang uh, Yang Fa, the CEO of Mint Museum of Toys and Gerald Weed, Director of International Museum Relations at the National Heritage Board. Thanks to both of you for coming on to talk to us about all these great exhibits and tours. We really appreciate it. I hope you'll come back again. Thanks You're welcome. Very Thanks very much. Thanks very much.